I do this activity as described on the website except for one change. I start all of the grandparents with different traits rather than just one color each. My students seem to have no problem following the traits even though they were randomly assigned from the beginning. To begin with, we want to start with the grandparents. So six traits are chosen at random for Grandmother A and Grandfather A. I use the foam squares because I have a lot of them and they come in different colors and they're pretty cheap. You also want to make sure that you have crayons that match all of the colors of the squares or whatever you are using. Here I have colored in the traits for Grandmother and Grandfather A. Now they are going to have a child. This will be the mother. I randomly pick three traits, half of them, from Grandmother A and three traits, randomly, from Grandfather A. Since half the genetic code comes from each parent, the mother ends up with half of her traits from each of her parents, and those are colored in. We do the same thing for the father. His parents are Grandfather B and Grandmother B. They each have six random traits. Sometimes I close my eyes when I pick them, just to be sure they're random. These are the grandparents, all colored in on our sheet so that we can follow the traits and watch the patterns. And again, we randomly choose half the traits from the grandfather B, half the traits from grandmother B, and they will have a baby boy. This will be father. Now we will color in father's traits from his two parents. We can see that he inherited half of his traits from each. At this point, we are finished with the grandparents, and so we stack their cups to the side to avoid confusion. Now mother and father will meet each other, fall in love, and have children. This is where it becomes a little more complicated, because they will have four kids. So when we choose three traits from each parent for each of the children, we have to be sure that we put them back into the correct cup so that we can choose from those genetics for the next child, and so on. So, the first child that mother and father have together will have two red, two purple, a pink, and a green trait, and we will color those in on our lab sheet. At this point, we pay careful attention to put the traits back into the cups they came from and draw again for the second child. Three from father, three from mother, and I stress that this is 50% of their genetic code from each parent. And child number two will have one red, three purple, and two green. And we color that in. Again, we will return the traits to the proper parent. And you can always have them check against their lab sheet to make sure that mother and father still both have their individual genetic codes. They get mixed up, they have a color-coded sheet to use to get them correct again. Again, child number three, three traits from each parent. I apologize, it's hard to film and hold the recorder and draw from the cups. Child three is three red, two purple, and a yellow. We can see that the siblings are going to have some things in common. For example, all three of the first kids have red and purple. And now we will draw for the fourth child. I usually have students close their eyes or have one hold the cup where the other can't see and a teammate draws. Again, two red two purple, a green, and a yellow. Once they're all filled in, we start looking for patterns. All four kids have red and purple, and that makes sense because we find that on both sides of the family. Three of the four children got a green from mom. Two browns found on both sides of the family reached a dead end when they weren't passed on to mom and dad. Half of the children received a yellow, and we can tell that it came from father and not mother. We can see that only the first child inherited the pink trait from her mother, who also got it from her mother. We also see that the third child has the same traits as her father, and is a lot like him. Even though we know half of those traits came from her mother, 
they still match the traits that her father has. So you get the idea. And the fun thing is that every group gets different results. Sometimes the siblings look very much alike, and then other times they're all very different. Sometimes there are many dead-end traits or traits found in every single member of the family. A couple of times we have assigned different characteristics to these colors. We'll say red means freckles and purple means uh, a long second toe and so on, just for fun. Here is a sheet that another table did during the same lab and you can see that the family traits are totally different in the way they are inherited. For example, Grandmother Bee is very unique with only pinks and purples. And then we see some grandkids had no pink at all, even though it was found on both sides of the family. Then it's really fun to hear students talk about traits that run in families. They will compare siblings in a family they know that look so much alike, or how different they look from their own sister or brother. And we get into some really good discussions about inherited traits, and we can see why sometimes people seem to have inherited traits from family members, and then other times someone can look or act very different from the other members of the family. Here's the lab sheet that I use to help them evaluate some of the patterns that they see. All in all, this is a great activity and my students enjoy doing it every year. For more than 50 video lessons of elementary hands-on science, please see my other videos on my YouTube channel, NPMM Science. Thanks.